One of the things that I notice about your band, which is very refreshing and what I enjoy, is that you're not trying to be heavy. You're not trying to portray yourselves as heavy. It's just what you do. And it, and for me, I've always admired and I've always enjoyed artists of all realms who just are doing it for real, with the true integrity of it. I mentioned earlier that I, that I noticed that, for me, my interpretation, I feel like a 70s psychedelic vibe. What does influence Bong River? Man, well... And I hate when... I, I don't want no, you to interpret as, give me a I, list. I've really got into being in bands and being in music in like the late 90s, early 2000s, when the Midwest indie scene was just blowing up. And all those bands were amazing. Like... The drummer from Russian Circles oh, wow. was actually in a band called Real of Steel from St. Louis. Amazing. Hands down, one of my favorite indie bands of all time. Um, and that's where I kind of really got into music. And, but, I, but I still had a love for metal, so I'd always throw on my metal records. So I was listening to that, and then hip-hop, and then, you know, Portishead. Yeah, so, the- <laughs> so it was all over the place. Yeah. So we're not like constantly listening to one genre and one genre just having it pounded in our head and like this is what it has to sound like. It doesn't have to sound like anything. Yeah. What about yourself? Uh, again, the same. Uh, I grew up in a real musical household. My dad has better taste in music than I do, and like a lot of my favorite bands, he introduced me to. And it's not like Zeppelin. It's like oh, he gave me my first Godspeed You Black Emperor record and oh, like wow. fucking Mogwai and stuff like that. Nice. You know, so um, just like all over the place. And you know, he saw all the bands that I think are cool before I did. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. You know, there's always the love of metal, but like as of the last few years, anything that has like just a big rhythm section doesn't matter if it's like pop bands or hip hop or metal or just like a noisy rock record like if it's just got big drums big bass i'm all about it so i i think it kind of shows so. you're touring right now here on the west coast this is the second time you've been here to los angeles last the, the first time you were here as i mentioned before there was really a very loyal audience waiting for you which i was very surprised we were too <laughs> Have you been going to other regions of the United States that you haven't ventured there before? And what has the response been there? And do you feel that you, since you are returning to Los Angeles and you are writing, quote unquote, that heavy realm vibe that's very popular here in the West Coast, do you feel that most people are really the ones that like ride that, you know, what's hip wave? That they're not really grasping, say, for someone like myself who who has been around your music for a long time and sees the evolution and the growth. Um, Be honest, we could always edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to process there's, an answer. Well, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's definitely. You're gonna see a bunch of hot chicks here tonight, bro. Bunch of hot smoking chicks, <laughs> and I'm very bitter because Again. back in the '80s there Again. was nothing but dudes. Again, have you seen Ron? <laughs> <laughs> Hang out with Ron. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, they're listening to you now, and by next year they're going to move on to whatever's there's, happening. I mean, there's definitely people that are always going to be like, oh, that sounds interesting, or I heard about that, I'm going to go. It happens in everything. Take their money. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> not that I have ever met the person or know the person, but ask Dave Grohl what the Nirvana shows went from in 1989 or 90 to like 92. Wow, that guy's jamming out with fucking a beetle, dude. All that, and he's jamming out in like a Game of Thrones t- t- chair, but whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, there's always people that are going to gravitate towards something that they weren't a part of originally. Um, is that a bad thing? Maybe when money and commercialized products get thrown at it, like, you know, you see like, oh, do you hear that sleep record on that Dodge commercial? What? Yeah. So our endorsement by Diet Coke. Yeah. It's a good time to announce. Yeah, we're gonna get a huge. We're just gonna. <laughs> that's on our rider. A case of Diet Coke a day. <laughs> I, I'm not being a smartass. I can actually see, and I'm being dead serious. I can actually see your music being used for uh, endorsements because 
the wave has changed now, man. I mean, I, w- I would never think an Ozzy song would be in a fucking car commercial 30 years ago. True. I mean, uh, there's been, like, video games that have used our music. Really? It, yeah. Um, nothing, like, huge. Like, yeah, like, indie games. Uh, Sick. We just, uh, someone just used uh, something off the new record for, uh, like, an independent, like, sci-fi. And I really wish I remember the name of it. The uh, guy was from Florida. Wasteland, I think, was, like, it was Wasteland Part 2 or Part 1. I can't remember. Uh, he ended up using it during... I think the actual movie and or credits. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah, so it's gaining popularity. How far can the entire genre of sludge, doom, whatever you want to call it, go? Probably not far. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's never going to be Taylor Swift. It's not, it's not like if all of us are doing this because we're expecting to. Like, I'm not trying to be Sam Rubin or something. <laughs> fucking, you know, that's a, some West Coast interviewer dickhead. It's not like we're all doing this. Seriously, it's not like we're all doing this because we want fucking money. I mean, it just so happens that now, yeah, you're probably getting some good gas clearly, money. Clearly, this is the when we started this band, we were thinking, okay, let's let's do really long instrumental songs under the name Bong Ripper because that's going to get us a lot of money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fact that we're here or even exist uh, 10 years later is just shocking to this day. Really? Because we've... If, as far as bands go, on the decisions you make as a band to like be successful and continue, we've made every wrong decision possible. Um, we've never done press. We've never sent a record out for review. We don't promote our shows, and we write ridiculous music that is not commercially acceptable by any means necessary. And somehow, people show up. We're here right now. Like we. Yeah. They, they they brought us out here to hang out on California for the weekend. We all go back to work on Monday or Tuesday, but it's it's a blast. I can't complain. And that in itself is why these type of artists and this type of music is so important and will always exist because no matter what is popular, there is always an undercurrent of creativity and integrity and fuckers that are doing shit for real. And then you get to this level, and it's got to be rewarding, right? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely rewarding. I mean, we've, we've been, like, in two weeks, we're having our 10-year anniversary show, so... That's crazy. Tr- yeah, trust me. Dealing with these guys for 10 years? <laughs> that's, uh, that's fair. Or Dan, just in general. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's definitely rewarding. You know, I think you can only sludge along, pun intended. Yeah playing to like two or three people that are just happen to be at the bar because that's their bar stool you know yeah, to now. yeah you know we've, we've done that yeah, so. I mean, yeah we've done we, you know we've definitely done that you have definitely played for the other bands and then the other bands we watched the other bands we've had those shows and we had multiple of those shows and Lots of years of those shows. you can only do those shows for so long before you start going oh, is that gas money worth it yeah you know is my time away from home worth it yeah. You know, so it's definitely a give and take, and then I guess if it doesn't start evolving, you just kind of have to evaluate why you're doing it still. And if you're having fun doing it, keep doing it. Yeah, right. Make, it, it, it's it's really it all comes down to just keeping it simple. Is it fun or not? Miserable. You released that last year. What's going on? Any new material? No, nothing. I mean, we got a couple ideas. Um, we've just been. Preparing for shows and yeah, uh, I'll, hopefully when we get back from this, we'll start writing new stuff and yeah. hopefully it'll start start flying out and um, no plans of yet for anything new. So I mean, we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get eventually. To it. Well, yeah, the, it, it seems that part of what we discuss in regards to the music is is that it's organic. Yeah, it's, it's real. Not there, it's not there. Yeah, it's not there. Uh, it's like not there. Since yeah. we were here last, so what last year? We were here. We played out in New York. Uh, we went back to Roadburn out nice. in the Netherlands. We did, uh, Sweden in December. Yeah. So we, we've been keeping busy, touring. you know. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we don't really tour. We vacation since, <laughs> uh, you know, it's mostly just like we go hang out somewhere cool for a weekend and they play a back, show and, and then go we go back, home. They go back to so, work. yeah. Um, so we, we don't really tour. We all have like full time jobs. So we have like, you know, two weeks to do shows and. 
a couple of us are married outside of the band and you know not to confuse <laughs> I didn't marry Dan um, that's good word usage tonight what will you be playing for this audience here in Los Angeles that has been not only loyal but also expanding I fucking hate that too by the way um, great, great for you. Shitty for me because I'm gonna be sweating profusely. Some asshole's gonna be bumping in back my bad back. But hey, I'm glad that your music is expanding. <laughs> I'm sorry for your back. Uh, <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, it was a good show. Well, everything's gonna be old because we don't have anything new. Um, something off of Miserable, two songs off of Satan Worship Me Doom, nice. and then a song off of Hey Ashbury. Hey Ashbury. Nice. So, Bong Ripper, Los Angeles. Welcome him back. Go check out their vinyl and buy it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you.